because it is a special. It is a very special edition of the Two Bros Wrestling Show. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, an on the road edition. On the road, just like Willie Nelson. Uh, like, will that get us a copyright strike? We're not singing, so we should be okay. Good. I mean, I was planning on singing, but if you say well, that, we shouldn't be singing. Well, I don't sing, so that's you. We have a main event topic where we're taking people with us. By the time you watch this, you will have already seen AEW Dynamite. We are on the way to this week's AEW right, Dynamite. So be sure to look for us. Look for us. We'll be sitting at ringside. We also will uh, be reporting on the, the size of the crowd, the things that are occurring tonight. From my understanding, the main event tonight is a, uh, a guy named Rhodes uh, facing a Samoan named Joe. <laughs> so, you know, I never thought about that, but we do have... <laughs> it's almost a WrestleMania yeah, rematch. It's almost. <laughs> Finish the story, Dustin. Finish the story. Finish the story, Dustin. But, I mean, because... We are going to have so much behind-the-scenes footage of our Dynamite experience, and then, of course, afterwards, talk about what we've seen. Um, before we do that, Doug, I, I would like to talk a little bit of wrestling news for, with you. Because the uh, the AEW news I wanted to talk about kind of flows into our main event, I wanted to start with a couple of WWE cool things. Let's yeah. do it. The main one is the fact that Endeavor... The company that owns TKO, which uh-huh. owns WWE, is going private. Did you see? That? I did. I did hear something about that. I'm not exactly sure what that means. WWE was private once upon a time when Vince owned the majority of it, right? And exactly. then we public, and then they got a major cash injection. So with Endeavor going, not I almost said quiet. With Endeavor going private, that pretty much <laughs> is going to do away with shareholders and having to worry about that. And uh, yeah. So they will, will they buy out at folks who own WWE stock and all that now? So it's very interesting that Endeavor themselves had a very public um, public offering right before the pandemic. It's only been three years since they first went public. Right. And truthfully, it did not produce the level of income that they thought or okay. shareholders. One of the reasons they're taking back pride. Um, so it's definitely a mixed bag for them and that it wasn't exactly successful in generating profits for shareholders. But because basically you got an equity firm coming in and you have so many folks with controlling interest, like it this doesn't require shareholder approval. So if you are a shareholder, you're going to get paid out a certain amount uh, as they go private. But it's essentially the, you know, the big money guys that own the majority of the stocks that are okay. profiting from this by taking it back private. Right now, it doesn't really necessarily mean anything for WWE. Just would think this is something to watch. Only because it just goes to show that for what you want to say about Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon was a pro wrestling guy running a pro wrestling company. Now, he was a pro, he was a sports entertainment guy running a sports entertainment company. But it was his company. It was his company. And even though right now everything's great, business is great in WWE, it is just something to remember that in the grand scheme of things such as an endeavor, you are a small yeah. line item in the grand scheme. So true. You know, Vince McMahon this week, once again, sold some stock. Yeah. So, okay, I, I read about this, and I'm confused here. Maybe you can help me understand this. So, I, I read Vince sells, sells his stock. He's done this multiple times on this. Right. right. So, as my understanding, I thought he was just like selling, throwing it back out to the... You know, the, the ether that is the, like the stock exchange. Yeah. This, the, the, the last headline I read specifically stated he was selling it back to TKO. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Definitely that is the case with this. To this point, this one is like definitely the most minor of the transactions he's made since November. Right. All told now, he has netted one and a half billion dollars. Mm. Um, and the one reason though I wanted to point out this particular transaction is that it is probably the last one we will ever hear about um, uh, from Vince because this recent sale takes him below 4.7 percent that's the- right yeah and and now you will no longer have to report the SEC right you no longer okay. have to report these kind of transactions so we may not hear any more about that happening with, with Vince but uh, I know TKO obviously wants to buy back as much of its stock as it can especially since it's going private as well as it's pretty obvious from WrestleMania weekend, they are really eager to wash their hands of Vince McMahon. Yeah, then, um, very clear. One more bit of news that is not AEW related. Um, former WWE superstar legend 
Mick Foley, I know we talked a, a bit ago about uh, he apparently wanting to come back and do one more final retirement match, and he wanted it to be a death match, if you recall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We didn't think that was a great idea. No. Turns out his family doesn't think it's a great idea. Okay. Shock. Uh, and now, fortunately, Mick doesn't think it's a great idea. Good. So he has canceled the match. Uh, apparently, while training for this match, he suffered a concussion. Oh. He suffered a concussion training doing the simplest of bumps. Not even sure how he was concussed. Just wasn't feeling well. Got checked out. Found out he got a concussion doing something. Who knows what. That's how fragile his brain is. Uh. And as he said, with all the things he was thinking about for a final match that he wanted to do, oh, he now realizes it is not going to be wise to do for his future health so yeah good decision absolutely because i know at one point he was talking about hey this is going to be good for me because the last time i was trained for a match i dropped like x amount of pounds so yeah. I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna get in really great shape with this because we you all know you want to die and work out dude promise you i yeah. mean i would like to get healthier so i too want to have a death match, <laughs> is that how that works i don't think <laughs> death matches are the key to health Fair uh, um, but Good news for uh, the future of Mick Foley and, and for his family. Hey, yeah, Doug, the last thing I want to talk about before we, like, get into uh, all the behind-the-scenes right. stuff we're going to do this evening with uh, Dynamite. Um, this, the podcast hurt around the world, I guess. I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what else we can say about it other than CM Punk yeah. speaks. And, of course, when you put a microphone in front of Punk, things tend to happen. Things absolutely happen. He ran his mouth. He talked about AEW. He talked about a lot of the uh, the the reasons he ended up out of AEW. There was definitely some area of grievances, and it is nowhere near Festivus. And he had spent an hour on a variety of topics. Obviously, the thing that got the most attention, the thing we want to talk about now, because it really is going to play into what we're about to see in Dynamite. Yeah, very much so. Um, is one of the things that, uh, that CM Punk had to say as far as his criticisms go, is that he's not sure what the business model is of AEW. That there really is no business in AEW, and that Tony Khan himself is a nice guy, but he is not a boss. <laughs> you know, I, I I can see slivers of that truth, of Punk's truth, in, in what we've seen of AEW, but I refuse to believe that a man who comes from a billion-dollar family, who's you know owns his father owns his family owns everything that they own doesn't know anything about business. Tony has, what, five different businesses, including AWROH? I mean, sure, he is a wrestling fanboy. That's why he wanted to have wrestling as one of his businesses. But sure, he, he comes for money, but it's not like he's just sitting there on his money. He's running a lot of things with his father, with his family and the company. And, uh, you know, Cody Rhodes happened to be on that exact same podcast. Yeah. And obviously, in he is well more um, versed in public relations than he is Punk. incredibly politically savvy he, he, is. Uh, he is he is very but he also has play. a stake in the fact that you know this was something I created and I still have lots of friends there he was smart not mm-hmm. to bury those friends uh, when asked if he agreed with Punk's opinions he essentially said no he doesn't yeah Paul's, Punk's opinions Punk's opinions and I don't hold, I don't have that same assessment but tonight, Doug, on Dynamite, that we're getting ready to go see in Charleston, is uh, apparently the response that Tony Khan has to CM Punk's uh, CM Punk's appearance on on the uh, on the podcast. Do you believe that what we are about to see, or what is being reported that is going to be happening tonight? Do you think that that would be happening at all had it not been for that podcast, or is this Tony Khan reacting? This is Tony Khan reacting. I, I'm certain of this. I, I've read that Khan wanted has wanted to air this in the past, and this, I guess I guess has been talked down. But you know the uh, the incendiary mouth that is CM Punk has you know brought us to this point where we're going to see something interesting tonight. Now, from everything I'm reading online, it's not going to be anything where like when Punk allegedly lunges at Tony Khan or anything like that, where Tony's fearing for his life. But this is just the altercation between Jungle Boy. And Punk, so, and that and that may be because what Punk is saying, or at least from a certain point of view, conflicts with what we're going to see tonight. And I think that's probably what Tony's trying to get at. If there's a point to be made in any of it at all, I probably should have set that up. And that part of what Punk was saying on the podcast was related directly to his version of events, right, at Wembley Stadium with Jack Perry. 
the maybe more infamous fight that had occurred the year before with the Young Bucks and all. There's non-disclosures right. completely India. surrounding that. Yeah. On the podcast, Punk made it very clear, maybe to his detriment, uh, that oh, there's no you know I'm allowed to talk about this. There's no non-disclosure when it comes to this, uh-huh. and I'm thinking that that's what probably got Tony's ears to perk up. Going, well, now's the time. If you're going to go there, I'm going to sh- surely. If he's showing footage, he in his mind, Tony Khan's mind at least, thinks that it is going to refute the version of the rise that CM Punk just famously made last week. And I'm here to show that CM Punk is alive. Uh huh. Which we all kind of think that anyway, yeah. to an extent. So I'm not sure Tony needs to prove it. Uh, and then the reports I read is that the, you know those sources within WWE uh, that were asked about this. Okay, yeah, I haven't heard anything about this. They seem to think that uh, it is very short-sighted and foolish what Tony is getting ready to do. If in fact that is what he's getting ready to do. Uh, I kind of believe that myself, but you know the quarter public are beating to weigh this out. Because here's the thing, you're always going to have your those people that are going to chant CM Punk, CM Punk, wherever, and they're not going to care one way or another. There's probably a, a middle faction where, you know, myself, probably you fall into, it's like CM Punk is a great performer, great entertainer, but clearly, at this point, we can't say he's the best human being in the world. <laughs> he is not, you know, the best human being in the world. And, and that kind of tarnishes what he's capable of, but... I said it on our, our review the other night. You know, I am at a point where I can separate the art from the artist with CM Punk. You know, it's not like he's done any incredibly heinous things like, you know, others in wrestling have done recently, where it's very, virtually impossible to separate the art from the artist. So, am I going to enjoy CM Punk matches in the future? Sure. Am I wearing a shirt chanting CM Punk from now on? Probably not. Not. No. That, what effect will this have on? On us, honestly, we won't even know until we see exactly what is going to play out tonight. The right. rules, all we are going upon are the reports that this, because when I first heard, I'll be honest, I thought, I thought yeah, yeah, this is a rib. This will be a skit. This will be some joke. They're going to be Colt Cabana as CM Punk. <laughs> I thought that would be great. Really I mean, just some sort of dick, maybe a punk the, with insider, like, you know, knowledge, if you know, you know, uh-huh. got they. I did not know until uh, you started to read, like, no, he really plans on showing the actual footage. We'll see if that happens. Yeah. For all we know, lawyers have been involved in the last few days, and they, they may have to pivot from that. If he do- does do this, and it is a, a nuclear option, we'll see if it makes uh, any difference at all in, in what CM Punk said, or if it just kind of makes top, you know Tony look petty. It could go that way yeah. very easily. But regardless, it's going to be entertaining. Right. Every time, every time they've been to West Virginia, we have been there, and it's been some pretty historic things. That you know, we realized we had most recently, 
excluding tonight, you know, our punk sit down calling out uh, Hangman when he going off script, going off script. You know, we were at the very historic first uh, AEW in Charleston, West Virginia, where they crowned the AEW Tag Team Champions. Didn't realize till tonight, and I forgot until they mentioned it, but like we basically saw the start of, uh, uh, you know, the, the acclaim with Danny Ash. Yes, we did. Um, but yeah, a lot of, lot, they do good shows in Charleston. Why they keep coming back tonight was another good one. Uh, definitely, again, back to those numbers thing, there was less of a house than, than what has been um the first two for sure for my uh, yeah i mean members we saw going in we were like around 4100 people the last time they were in charleston tonight they set up for about 3000 and came close to selling that out i think so i mean you're still disappointing to see the upper deck you know blocked all i got down uh, but i mean this is smaller market absolutely it for tv i think we had a great crowd and they managed to for what they set up pretty much sell it out which yes. at some markets they're not doing in some markets that are way bigger than our small market they're not getting as many tickets as they sold tonight so overall uh down from what we've seen crowd wise still a very responsive crowd a very capacity crowd for the setup yeah probably around three thousand people um doug they they started uh with a bit of a surprise for us we knew we were seeing dynamite and a rampage taping, mm -hmm. um, but we also saw some ring on. We did see some ROH. Was not expecting that. We had an ROH uh, before Dynamite, which is always great. I am a little bit confused about who belongs where, though. Um, I mean, it's like a it's like WWE's like the oh, what's it called? The brand split. It, it doesn't exist. Doesn't not exist. I don't know. These the all the talent that Tony Khan has seems to be very interchangeable up to a certain level. I think. It's almost where you do need to have those hard and fast brand splits if you're going to do it, because there were some Ring of Honor talent that never make appearances on AEW. Right. Uh, later on in the in the taping for Rampage, which by the time any of you all are watching this, you've seen Rampage as well. We we saw uh, legit Layla Hirsch, which she's not been on AEW in more than a year, though she's been steadily wrestling on Ring of Honor. So Tony definitely has a problem um, differentiating his brands. Some folks float back and forth freely. Some folks stay exclusive. And those that stay exclusive to Ring of Honor might be folks that disappear off the main fans' radar for a while just because of the paywall that is up yes. in front of Ring of Honor, which doesn't do it any favors. The action of the Ring of Honor um, matches taped tonight were, were high. Yeah, absolutely. It's everything you would expect from any Ring of Honor match, any ROH. 30 minutes of Ring of Honor matches to start with. Nice surprise, nice little bonus. Then we hit the 8 o'clock hour, right before the 8 o'clock hour. Doug, there was no stress on this crew as far as changing over. It's always amazing. I mean, and a shout out to these, this crew. Every time I've seen them live, it, you're right. You know, there can be a countdown. We're 10 seconds to air. There's 50 different things that still need done. But these guys and gals are like clockwork. You know, swapping out all of the branding for ROH to AEW Dynamite, then doing it again for Rampage. But at least the time crunch isn't all going from Dynamite to Rampage. But still, uh, they do recognize they're running, working on the clock. I think I told you, uh, at the, no joke, I think I'm more nervous uh, hitting a the go live <laughs> button for the Two Pros show. I'm like sitting there for like six minutes, you know, worried about missing it, getting ready. Uh, getting my notes together and they're not sweating. Tony's out there just screaming at people oh, <laughs> four minutes before here. <laughs> Tony Khan did come out as uh, he tends to do. If you ever seen AEW Live, Tony is an entertaining individual for sure. A highly caffeinated, maybe, is a nice way of finally something. Sure, absolutely. Highly there, is, there is some energy in that man. He, absolutely. He is definitely now wrestling's crazy billionaire. I guess he's the only billionaire left. But yeah, by default makes him the crazy one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he definitely came out, tried to hype us all up, let us know what we were in for. And what we were in for, uh, it was a great night of action, Doug. They started with a, a tease of a match that didn't take place uh, at first. It was supposed to be our right. opening match. Um, and instead, it ended up being our closing match because Samoa Joe got himself attacked uh, by Swerve Strickland, which else is it, Kevin? It's Swerve's house, my friend. It is. Um, and so great. I mean, I know that Swerve was in the ring, but we had hoped as we're, you know, obviously marching towards 
Dynasty, the, the next pay-per-view, we thought that they would have to advance a lot of those storylines. So we, even folks that were not scheduled to be in the ring might be doing some uh, in-person promos or, as Swerve did, a nice run-in to, to damage Joe there, uh, get the match that he was about to have postponed to later on in the night. Our first actual contest, though, uh, was a banger. Absolutely. I can't think of a time when we've seen this combo in the ring together, Kevin. I'm pretty sure it does not happen. And five years ago, if I told you, you're going to see Adam Edge Copeland in a wrestling ring with Penta. Uh, I think it's one of those things that Edge or Adam was recently referring to in his promo about all those matches that he realized that never happened. Uh, this was one of those matches of like, yeah, wouldn't wouldn't have thought it, but what we got, fantastic. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic from both men going a, a full 30. Uh, quite the strong, strong contest. Um, that, there was a lot of good matches tonight, oh, honest. There were a lot of incredible matches. I'm curious to watch things back because uh, we had incredibly good seats, but, you know, being in a live event, sometimes people will pop up at the most inopportune times. And I'm a tall dude, I'm standing up, but then somebody will put a, you know, sign up too. So it's, or a cameraman decides. Or a mean, you or got an angle. So many, so many great shots I missed tonight because the AEW cameraman stepped right into my shot. <laughs> but at least you, you folks at home got to see the great shots. Champagne toast. Let, let's champagne let's talk champagne toast. We got champagne toast. I'm um, not sure that one went over so great with the live audience like that. It had its moments, right. but then there was, um, Again, it's one of those, let's see what the presentation is like on TV. Sometimes the, the live feel and TV feel, you go back and watch, completely different. Um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Obviously still good to see Tony Storm. I, I thought the crowd was a little quiet for what was actually one of the better matches of the night. Uh, the women's contest with uh, uh, between Mariah May and Anna Jay was yes. great. It was really great. I, I think at one point the crowd went into the business for themselves, chanting something. I'm really not sure what they were even chanting, but probably should be said that it is a bit of a long evening. It is, and therefore, you know, you you kind of get maybe some moments where people check out, but they were kind of checking out in what was actually a pretty good match. It's just maybe to folks that the audience uh, are familiar with or, yeah. Yeah, or that invested in or haven't yeah. seen in a while, which is a problem as we were talking earlier with AEW. Sometimes you get folks, sometimes you don't get folks for months at a time. Um, yeah, tonight we had room really hopeful. I know that, you know, I was, I think that, you know, talking to you, we've both done the same, but a lot of recent exciting influx of talent yes. that we had hoped to see. Your Will Ospreys, your Okada's, your uh, Mercedes Bonet. Yeah. Um, we saw a pre a, a pre tape of one of those, uh, a in person interview with, yes. with Osprey, and then to our great surprise, I think that you were totally fanboying out, uh, fanboying out on me there. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> uh, as much, I'm pretty sure there's footage on my phone that we go, Kevin, it's okay. <laughs> it was a squash match. But honestly, seeing Kazuchika Okada was one of the highlights of the night. Even if it was a squash match, and he's he's full on heel, and I think really enjoying himself being a heel, which I'm not. I'm I'm not disappointed. With. I, I actually think there's a place for squash matches on on TV. Uh -huh. uh, if it meant we got to see Okada, it was worth it. There was nothing that was horribly offensive. Nothing that was like no matches that like didn't deliver at all. Some were definitely better than others. Um, I did think that our main event was surprisingly good, considering that you have two talents that are closer to the end of their careers than the beginning. Uh, uh, um, Dustin Rhodes did not finish his story tonight. Did, you know, going into this, I was thinking this is like some odd sentimental grab for, I don't know, ratings. Because like you were joking before, we've got a Samoan named Joe against a Rhodes trying to finish his story and get and get a you know world title. Do you think Tony booked up just to play off of what's happening in the other company, or do you think that all that is just coincidental? That that Dustin oh, it is coincidental, but <laughs> yeah. Well, but you know, Dustin in the main in the main event really turned the crowd around. It took a crossroads to Joe to get at least from where we were in the audience. You know, 
that's what really brought the crowd around to him in that match. It was a hot crowd for the main event. They it really was. For the main event. Obviously, we got a little bit of blood. I have to say, um, and and just if I can reflect for a moment, I don't know. Maybe it's all that WrestleMania feel goodness that I just yeah, got through yeah. with witnessing or you know got me in a sentimental mood. But I'm sitting there in the Charleston Coliseum uh -huh. watching Justice in the Road yeah. lead. And I'm thinking, I'm about in the same spot. I was yes. sitting at ringside the last time I ever saw Dusty Rhodes wrestle a match. I was up on the floor on the left side, very similar position to what we were in tonight. And Dusty, after the match where he was a six man with the Road Warriors, he's walking out. And of course, it's Dusty in like the 80s or early 90s, maybe. Yeah. But of course, he's like busted open. Of so course. he's like coming through and he's bleeding. And as I sit there and watch his son, who probably is older now than Dusty was then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It just had a full circle moment of how many matches and moments I've seen in that very building. I'm sure you have too. Yeah. You know, when you saw wrestling, it was probably Huntington or Charleston as yeah. well. Um, but yeah, it was kind of cool to see a Rhodes in a main event, busted open, giving it his all. Because uh -huh. he really did give it his all. Joe yeah. did not take it easy it, on it him. Was, it was a, a show, absolutely. Before, Good show. Before uh, we get into the segment on Dynamite that I think we need to focus on the most, because mm -hmm. it's the one that is obviously uh, the most controversial, let's quickly shift to, uh, to just what happened on Rampage. Uh, okay. And because that was a, a taping that happened as well. By the time this airs, you all will have seen that. That's right. This will air on Sunday. So. Don't, don't sleep on <laughs> Rampage. <laughs> uh, it was um, it was eventful. Uh, you got Orange Cassidy. You had a a, a possible significant injury. Um, mm -hmm. We'll have to keep tab on that. But Julia Hart and the match she had with Layla Hurst did seem legitimately but no pun intended there. Shoulder injury. And this is this is something, too, where I was talking about earlier, because sometimes people pop up the most inopportune times at a live show because Julia Hart was outside the ring, legit Layla Hurst going outside the ring, uh, dived something. I don't know. Everybody popped up. By the time I was up, everybody was on the ground. Uh, legit Layla Hurst is you know, holding her nose like she's busted her nose. I yeah, thought she was, I thought she she was the one coming out being injured. The folks in front of us, I'm not sure if you heard them, they were down saying, oh, that looked like she came up short and didn't quite get what she was supposed to. So I don't know if Julia Hart stepped up to try, try and you know catch her or what happened there. Maybe maybe the footage is on the live, which we have yeah. and the, on the TV, which we haven't seen yet. But they definitely, the ref was checking on her. They were communicating in the corner. They went to a quick roll-up finish. We saw the doc. Yep, Dr. Sidwell was up. up. And we also saw Julia Hart's exit. And she was not a happy camp. So, Doug, um, main event of Rampage, also definitely worth seeing. Um, yes. One of the better matches of the night. It's just kind of sad in some ways at the end of a long evening uh, with a lot of the crowd having left to see one of the world's greatest wrestlers in Jay White, uh, New Japan headliner, Switchblade Jay White, wrestling uh, the, the always talented Matt Seidel slash Evan Bourne. Um, Put on a great match. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Worth watching. We'll see how it comes across, uh, whether or not they pop in a little bit of noise or not, because it just was like, man, it's not enough people here for that. I mean, you know, we are in a very working class area. Yeah, you know, a lot of people were taking off at, you know, 10, 10 30. And people probably drove from an hour or so away, maybe even yeah. more, I guess. Yeah, actually, this is so true for us. But I don't, I, I don't know. You're going to come all that way. You're going to stick around for that long. If, stick around for the, the Switchblade, man. If you, come have, on. if you haven't been to an AEW taping to save money, what they do is before Dynamite or after Dynamite, you get extra matches, sometimes both like we did tonight. And you stick around and you tape Rampage. I'd say, Doug, um, for me, it looked like at the start of Rampage, after Tony comes out and says, you know, everybody stay put. You got some big stars coming. And... Uh, maybe 10 15 percent of the crowd left not that i mean it was pretty packed however by the time you got to the end when you got to the uh uh matt seidel um switchblade match mm -hmm. i'd say it was closer to 30 to 35 percent of the bill yeah. was now gone uh probably causing them to have to dim the lights a little bit because hard camera definitely facing empty seats by that point absolutely 
Another thing I would say, though, why it was a, a significant rampage, not only because it had a better than normal main event, um, and not only may it contain an injury to a, a major player in AEW, it also contained a debut. It did. I mean, you know, this is the point where I realized that I am not much at watching as much Rampage as I should be watching. <laughs> Zach Knight, uh, Soraya's brother, made his uh, in-ring debut after several weeks of backstage segments. And this this kid, not sure if you can really call him a kid at this point, but he's younger than me, so I'm calling him a kid. This kid, <laughs> well, this is probably the entire roster, other than maybe uh, Dustin. <laughs> but yeah. anyway... <laughs> this kid comes out hitting hard. I, I, there was a good five minutes of action before the bell even rang. And he was impressive. I mean, he was very stiff, very British, strong style. Very much British, yes. Uh, much larger in, in person uh, than I expected. I guess, you know, see him actually in his wrestling gear and in the ring. I'm thinking back to the kid I saw on the, you know, Wrestling With My Family yes. documentary skinny kind of kid that you're thinking he doesn't have the look he totally has the look totally of has it. and had a ring presence and he and cool hand put on a great match too so there was several really good matches on rampage really yeah absolutely if you didn't check out rampage having it sitting on your dvr or something you definitely need to do Devin, are you ready to talk about the goat in the room let's rewind and scapegoat in the room i guess the a name we had heard mitch on air in some time um, we, 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 his name we did hear, yes. uh, the, the name we didn't hear was the other person involved in the altercation. And yes, as the world knows by now, and that we surmised, uh, go again, is that Tony did go there. He did show yes. the footage. Um, that, the, the footage, I mean, it's, I can't say that. I wasn't interested in seeing it. It's just the wrestling fan and me, the the voyeuristic, like, you know, sure. what's really going on, what really happened. You want to see it. You see it, and, it, and there's not a ton to there's it. There's not. A, I mean, there were some things that were pretty clear, mm -hmm. is that Perry was standing by himself. Uh-huh. Punk inserts himself into the situation. Well, right up on him, right in his face. And the first physical part of their shoving match was Wild Punk. Perry defended himself. And it was pretty clear that if that's what Tony wants to show. Right. If, I mean, I'm assuming that's it. I need to go back and watch the Halani interview now and see Punk's telling of that. Yeah. To, he, to see if the, that syncs up or if there was a, some sort of, if Tony perceives this as some sort of gotcha moment where he could say, see? I think he would almost have to for him to go there. Yeah. But I'd like to talk a little bit about the way that he went about presenting this footage sure. because he did so through the mouths of his primary heels playing the executive VP roles, the arrogant executive VP roles. And they were using that as an excuse for why they were distracted and lost later on that night. Absolutely. At their most important, their largest, most important show, they didn't have time to process or anything because they had their EVP hats on, not the wrestling hats. I really do like the way from a heel for look at this from the heel babyface perspective, right? I really like the way they wrap this around this heel mentality of, you know, we're gonna show this because this is important to us and hey, we're gonna give you context. And the context is this is the reason why we lost our match. <laughs> yeah, you know, it becomes this selfish heel thing. But I think and maybe this is where you're going, does that make sense to have your heels try and make a point for your company it's not like adam, Co adam copeland going out there last week and saying hey this tribalism has got to stop if, you, is good. if you're going to if you're wanting if your point tony khan is to say my version of the story contradicts everything that punk was saying and i'm going to show that that punk's a liar you do so through the mouthpiece of a face because doing it through the mouthpiece of using your heels and i doubt this is going to be on air on dynamite but it should be noted in the live audience there was a loud and oc punk chant yes so do you want your arrogant snotty heels saying true things about this guy is selfish went into business for himself mm -hmm. threatened one of the biggest shows we've ever done all true statements right would that not be better coming from 
you know, Edge. <laughs> or so, I mean, I know Edge wasn't there at the time. But that Brian Danielson who was on the, uh, Daniel Bryan, there was on the disciplinary board that made the decision. Somebody that was a little more sympathetic that, like, I don't think that what Tony wants is a CM Punk chance after showing the right, footage right. that... Well, and that's exactly what he gets because you had you have to expect that I think because you know there's still a huge faction out there of folks who really love CM Punk regardless of what he does or how he does it. <laughs> but like, so there's how, how many people are chanting CM Punk because they don't like the Bucks, it, these heel Bucks. You yeah. Know? So uh, that's what you're supposed to do. This is the opposition. You're showing us something that you're against this guy. So and then you have to program this to. You know, you're, you're against this guy, so we're going to be for him. Then you have to wonder what the the point is. If he's trying to show that I'm the AW is the good guys and this, and that Punk's a liar, um, that presentation is all kinds of mixed up. Really, all kinds of mixed up. Or is they trying to go for some like really meta kind of a thing, where it's like, look, our lying heels are or pointing out the lying heel. We're telling you when he's telling lies, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't. But, but then your face, FTR, is out there basically talking about how like we need to move on let's get over this nonsense Uh uh-huh when the smart fan knows it's tony khan who's making sure that that nonsense is presented as a uh drawing point for his dynamite program right tony tony gets a little confused on on the hill face side of things and uh, sometimes i think he just forges ahead uh, without properly thinking about how the context of the overall show goes. Because that was definitely one where, like, I'm interested. I think it's odd the way they're presenting it. And now your baby faces are crapping all over what you just did. But it's really the company that just did it. And we all kind of know that. Right. So now I'm really confused. I'm, I'm really confused. And I mean, I wonder if he is really that guy that we see hyping in between shows and before shows and, even, and doing the thank you after the show. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not sure when our camera stopped, but you know, this is this is what you get. You know, we're not live, but we are on the road and and we're going gorilla style here anyway. So let's hit that big finish just in case we don't let's have hit, any hit of the big that. hit the big finish. Let's do this. Uh, okay, so big finish performance of the night. My performer of the night. I I would love to give. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. We've got a little road construction here. There we go. Uh, uh, old bumpy road, but uh, bumpy road. I have to give it to, to Dustin again. His his brother just had one of the biggest nights weekends in the history of professional wrestling on top of the world. Dustin goes out in front of a building of three thousand people, has his own little main event moment, and you know, in his fifties, I would love to say that that was my performance of the night, but. Man, that Will Osprey promo. Uh, I have to give it that. The gold medal, I'll give the silver to Dustin, uh, but Will Osprey won. We were just excited and happy to see Will Osprey. Did, didn't know for sure that we were going to. And then he goes out against Brian, you know, calls out Brian Danielson and advances their dynasty match. He talks about how the things that Brian says he's going to do, he's heard from bigger men, stronger men, better men. It was just a great all-around promo, and it used to be kind of a knock on Osprey is that you know he could do all this flipping and flopping, and uh, he was a great technical wrestler, but not much of a talker. I disagree. He definitely proved any anybody who was who was ever saying that about him wrong tonight. And he there's just so much energy in that promo, so much energy. Doug, your performance, I'll so I so per- performer of the night. I I you know I said this. NJ does not get enough love. I think there's some rec- recognition that is needed there because you know she put on a great show. What's the what's the other girl's name? The the girl she wrestled. I think that was Tony Storm. I can't think. Oh of yeah, uh, Mariah May. Yeah, Mariah May. So this girl also put on quite the you know, performance. But Anna J just really nailed it tonight. And these both of these girls had to work through a crowd that had kind of gone into business for themselves and wasn't quite as much into this match as I think they should have been. So, you know, just for that alone, powering through and put on an excellent match, I'm I'm giving it to Anna Jay. And I take this exit. You sure can. Yes, you sure do. <laughs> this is the exit. Um, so, Doug, uh, let's go, let's say match um, of, of Dynamite. I'd like to go into what is the botch. The botch. I think we might be in lockstep on this. I think we are. Um, I know it's the headline. I know it's why uh, Tony was 
trying to get eyeballs to see if he could pop a rating. Uh, but it just felt like that is exactly what he was doing. Is mm -hmm. just trying to pop a rating with some sensationalistic, like, I don't know. I did want to see it. I can't say that I wasn't interested uh, ever since I knew this footage existed. You wanted to see it. And then you see it and it's just like, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of a shoving match. I mean, yeah, Punk looks like a jerk, but we kind of know Punk's a jerk. Right. right? I just, I, I guess I don't understand ultimately why he did what he chose to do. I know we talked in the beginning of the show about reports from WWE apparently like thinking that it was just foolish that he would want to do it. I kind of have to agree with whoever those sources were. It's like, I'm not mm -hmm. sure why he would do that. It only kind of makes him look bad. It, it really does. It, you know, I don't get it. It's almost like, and again, I think I've said this already, I need to go back and watch the Hawani interview to see if what Punk is saying contradicts anything that you see there. Because that's the only reason I could think that Tony thinks this is a gotcha moment for this. And yeah, I can show this and everybody's going to know what's what. We'll know we'll shortly whether or not it actually popped a rating, which might be all that this was about. Right. It certainly didn't prove anything that we didn't already think, and that is that Punk's a, a narcissistic jerk. And, um, but the way it was done, I don't think benefits AEW as a company long term uh, to, to have done it. So definitely my botch of the night, a bit of a nothing burger, kind of still interesting to be there again up yeah. Crash TV. Um, what was much better than that? Let's talk. Let's talk match of the night. We might be on lockstep on this too. I'm what are you thinking? We have we have not talked about this. Yet. No. So I, I'm curious to what you're thinking. I think they started dynamite out with the best match they had on. I I I think I turned turn to you afterwards. It's like the bar is raised. I don't yes. think anything's going to beat it tonight. And and nothing did. That Dustin Samoa and Joe uh, Samoa Joe match was full of emotion. It was great. Um, the women's contest was great. The uh -huh. Jay White Evan Bourne contest was great. There was some good stuff tonight. Nothing rose to the level of Pinta and Adam Copeland to me. I've got to agree 100% with you. That Pinta Adam, and it's a combination we have never seen before. We've never seen these. Oh, cut my head off there. We've never seen this, and we got to see it tonight, and it was just so exciting. And to watch it live was great stuff. I, watching it live, always great stuff. Go see AEW. Go see wrestling. Yeah, yeah, I don't care what wrestling it is. Right. Uh, no need to get tribalistic about it. Wrestling, wrestling you know, is, is right now uh, in a a wonderful phase. I, I, I think we are in a renaissance period. I really do. We can call it whatever era we want to call it, but right. it definitely feels like there's something going on where uh, a rising tide should lift boats. There's a lot of good wrestling out there. We saw some of it tonight. Uh, Doug, there will be some to be seen next week, too. Uh, we will not be on the air next Sunday night because we do not want to go head to head nope. with Dynasty. Nope. Um, we got an FTR Young Bucks match that's going to blow the roof off. We got uh, <laughs> Osprey and, and Danielson, yep. uh, which is going to blow the roof off. So we're off next week. Watch Dynasty. We'll be back the following week, Doug. Our show, believe it or not, we'll be previewing Backlash. How quickly the pay per view Amazing. rolls. Yeah, amazing. But join us then for Backlash. Until then, thanks for taking this trip with us. Ready to go, the kings of the ring, we're taking the crown, wrestling news, we're breaking it down.